Adventures in Time and Space, told in future tense. Dimension X, 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 X. The mind of man is still an unprobed field. Within it lie many mysteries still unsolved. But there are men today, psychologists now experimenting with telepathy, hypnosis, thought transference, who believe that in the future we may discover the existence of a force of the mind more powerful than any force the world has ever known. We go ahead now in time some 10 years and in space to the campus of a small eastern college. The hour is late and in one of the dark college buildings, two men stand in front of a door that bears the name Professor Arthur Barnhouse, Psychology. Well, here you are, Clinton. Thank you, Major. Here are the keys to the professor's desk and files. I guess you inherit everything now. You might as well dictate a full report while everything's still fresh in your mind. I'll wait and see you home. Oh, no, no, that isn't necessary. I'll be all right. You sure? After what's happened tonight, we wouldn't want you to have an accident, too. Major, after what happened tonight, I have a hunch the whole world is ripe for an accident. I'm afraid you're right, Clinton. Well, good night. Good night. Pull yourself together, Buster. Easy does it. August 21st, 1960. Restricted report from George Clinton to the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, the FBI, National Security Board, etc., etc., etc. Subject, the so-called Barnhouse effect and Professor Arthur Barnhouse who discovered it. I first met the professor two years ago in the fall of 1958. He was a professor of psychology here at Wilton College and I was here on an instructor's fellowship in the psych department. They assigned me to be Barnhouse's assistant, and he needed one. He hardly ever remembered to go to a class, and he didn't seem to do anything else either. For three months, I watched him sitting at the desk here in his study. He'd either stare at nothing for hours or fall asleep, nodding over his mess of papers. I couldn't understand it, and it was none of my business, but one day, I thought I'd better give him a shake. Uh, what? Uh, what? I said it's 2.15, Professor. Don't you want to go to your 2 o'clock class? Don't you want to mind your own business? I beg your pardon. Sorry, Clinton. Forgive me. I don't know what gets into me. Forget the class. The kids would rather be outdoors anyway. Okay, Professor. In that case, I'm sorry I woke you up. Uh, it's all right. I just can't seem to get my sleeping done at night. Clinton, what do you know about the international situation? Well, I'm no political scientist, if that's what you mean. I read the papers when I have time. Well, that's the way I've always been. Lately, I've had to look into it. I stay up nights looking into it. Uh, Professor, uh, I don't want you to take this personally or anything, but... Well, sir, I wonder if you'd mind if I asked to be transferred. You mean you'd rather work with somebody else in the department? Oh, no, sir. No, sir, it's not that. I, I think maybe there's a chance for a psychologist to work on that government project. Government project? Oh, yes, that uh, army thing. Yes, sir. They're trying to develop robot pilots for the new fighter rockets so they'll be expendable. Oh, yes, yes. Something else designed to replace men. Yes, sir. And you know, it's a funny thing. The robots work just like human brains. They get overworked or overloaded or something, and they have nervous breakdowns. Now, if I could only find out what drives those electronic brains crazy, why, I'd feel Clinton, that I was... Uh, if you want to study a brain that's going crazy, never mind the robots, you can go to work on me. What are you talking about, sir? I don't know. I'm either crazy as a bed bug or a... Clinton... I wish you'd help me find out. Are you serious, Professor? I never was more serious in my life. I, I'm afraid I'm going out of my mind. But why? What makes you think so? This is what makes me think I'm crazy. Those dice? Clinton, do you know what the odds are against my rolling a seven? 
Oh, about five or six to one. Watch. Seven. Now, what are the odds against my rolling it again? Twice in a row? Plenty. About a hundred to one, I'd say. Watch. Professor, you're hotter than a two-dollar pistol. <laughs> it's funny. That's what they said eight years ago when I first discovered this. Discovered what? This force of the mind. I call it dynamo-psychism. You mean you shove those dice around just by thinking about it? People have always thought there could be a force of the mind. You know that. Fortunately or unfortunately, I've learned to control it. Yeah? Uh, how did you happen to find out about this, Professor? Well, it was about ten years ago, back in 1948. I made the mistake of going to a psychologist's convention. And in order not to appear unsocial, I happened to find myself for the first and only time in my life, in a dice game. What happened? I didn't have the faintest idea what was expected of me, and someone told me to roll sevens. So I did. Ten of them. I'll bet you weren't asked back into that game. That night, in my room, I realized that it simply couldn't have been an accident, Clinton. I tried to reconstruct the exact scene, the position of my body, and finally, the thoughts in my mind. And that was what did it. I remembered what had been my train of thought, and I proceeded to roll sevens, not ten consecutive times, but fifty. Oh, brother, there it is again. Professor, can you do anything else? I mean, besides shove dice around? You see that inkwell on my desk? Sure. Watch it. Don't take your eyes off it. If nothing happens, say so, and I shall go quietly, even happily, to the nearest sanitarium. Okay, Professor, shoot. Hey, it... Why, it just blew up. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to splash ink on your suit. Well, that, that, that's okay, Professor. What, what was that funny noise? Oh, that. The dynamo psychic waves are a little like ultra-high frequency waves. Sometimes when I turn on the power, they, they create a kind of static. Listen, Professor, how much power have you got? Could you blow up anything, well... You know, big. I could flatten the Great Wall of China. Boy, you'll make the helio-oxygen bomb look sick. And that's what scares me, Clinton. The thought that maybe I could use this power to save the world. Clinton, you've got to help me. Who, me? Professor, when it comes to international relations, I don't know from where. You'd better get in touch with the State Department. The State Department? Yes, they'd be the ones, wouldn't they? Well... You probably want to be getting home now. I'll see you to the door. I could use a breath of fresh air. Okay, Professor. You better stop brooding about this. You get somebody else to do your worrying for you. Yes, yes, you're right. I have been brooding, wondering what to do. Just sitting and staring endlessly at that awful monstrosity across the way. You mean the old bell tower? Yes, I've gotten so I can't stand the sight of it anymore. Professor, look, what... Well, there's nothing left but a pile of rubble. Oh, my, I didn't really mean to do that. Well, you see, Clinton, it's got to the point where my lightest whim is more dangerous than a blockbuster. Professor, you get in and write that letter to the State Department right now. You pack too much of a wallop. <laughs> Professor Barnhouse mailed his letter and things happened fast. A long arm of the army reached out and within five days, the two of us were deposited in an old mansion in Virginia, surrounded with a barbed wire fence and 20 guards and labeled top secret. As soon as they'd seen a couple of small demonstrations, they set up a big test of dynamo psychism and the professor was a very important guy. You could see him getting more unhappy every day. General Barker, I've got to talk to you. Just a minute, Professor. We're cleaning up the last details in Operation Brainwave. We'll roll at 1,400 hours tomorrow. At 1,400 what? Two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Robot-controlled fighter rockets will take off at exactly 1,400 minus 10 and appear over the target at 1,400. Watching from here over the video screen, you will then try to knock all 20 of them out of the sky. Think you can do it? Of course I can do it. Fine. But... 
And we've taken care of everything. Everything, except that you neglected to ask me if I wanted to do it. I don't. This whole thing strikes me as childish and insanely expensive. We'll decide about that. But what's the good of it? I wouldn't mind acting as a defense weapon if it were necessary. But I can make all wars and armaments unnecessary. I could give every nation what it needs. I could move mountains, build roads, dig irrigation canals. I have a technique which costs nothing and can do immense good. You're spending millions to prove that it can do immense damage. It doesn't make sense. You know something, General, he's right. Of course I'm right. I want you to send me and Clinton back to Wilton College right away. That's quite impossible, Professor. This operation has gone too far to be called off now. Yes, but... Even if we wanted to call it off. If your dynamo psychism really works, you're apt to be the key to our entire defense setup. Uh, but listen... You'll have to excuse me now. Major Cuthrell and I have to double-check the confidential list of the observers on this end. Have you got a major? Uh, yes, General. It's right here. Uh, Alberts, Barker, Bernstein, Carter, Clinton, Cuthrell, Holbrook, Lawrence, Stein, Williams. Check. I guess that includes everybody of importance. Uh, what about me? What? Oh, uh, that's taken for granted, Professor. Thanks. Fourteen hundred hours. Will you be ready? I'll be ready. And now, if someone will wind the restricted clock and put the confidential cat out, I'm going to bed. YDR to brainwave control. Observation plane to brainwave control. Come in, please. That's McKinley in the observation plane. Cut me in. Hello, McKinley. Reading you clear on the speaker. Everything all right? All okay, General. Take off uneventful. Fighter rockets now flying on course in perfect formation. Altitude 5,000 feet. Airspeed 865. Visibility unlimited. Are you tracking us? We've got you on radar. Haven't picked you up on the video screen yet. What's your estimated time of arrival over at the target? ETA, two minutes. Check. Remember, McKinley, the observation plane is not to enter the target range. Veer off and circle at the 10-mile limit. Bring the rockets overhead by remote control. Check. Observation signing off. One minute, 45 seconds to go, Professor Barnhouse. Are you in good shape? I'm all right, General. Good. We can all take our places in front of the video screen now. You sit here, Professor, in the center. Major Cuthrell, will you turn on the video screen? Right, General. Nothing yet, just empty sky. Uh, hold it. Uh, I hear them coming in. There are 20 of them, Professor. You think you can knock them down at this altitude? Uh, distance has nothing to do with it. I don't want anything to go wrong. You're sure you feel all right? General, I know I can do it. If that's all that's worrying you, let's call the whole thing off and save $20 million. There they are. They're coming in. Get ready, Professor. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Now, wide open, Professor. Well, go ahead, Barnhouse. Knock them down. I did. Nonsense. All you've done is blank out the video screen. What went wrong? Did you give it everything you had? I was wide open, General. Then it didn't work. They're still flying. They... What's that? It just took a few seconds to work. That's... Holy smoke, they're dropping like flies. McKinley, the brainwave control. Look What's happened to these rockets? They're going down like flying. Right, heaven, it works. It really works. Cuthrell, get Washington on the line. Barnhouse, I want you to... Hey. Hey, where's Barnhouse? I was right here. Clinton, where's the professor? You got me, General. We were all staring at the video. He must have walked out. Get moving, everybody. Let the guard search the house. Yes, sir. If anything happens to that man. General Barker. General Barker. What is it, Corporal? Corporal Gray, guard at the main gate. Sir, Professor Barnhouse is gone. Oh. Gone? Where? He came tearing out of the gate at 40 miles an hour. Here's a note, sir. Do it out of the cars and went by. I picked it up. Let me see it, quick. What the... What got into that man? What does he say, General? Gentlemen... As the first superweapon with a conscience, I am removing myself from your national defense stockpile. Setting a new precedent in the behavior of ordnance, I have humane reasons for going off. Signed, 
Arthur Barnhouse. Barnhouse was gone. Within 12 hours, the world was on a spree. The headlines were glorious or terrible, depending on what you think of the things the way they are. Helio Barnhouse flattens Helio Bomb Factory! The dynamo psychic waves reached every corner of the world. In every country, every continent flashed the news of what was happening. Hey, Barnhouse knocks out hitting an atomic stockpile in Asia! There was a new kind of war, the war of tattletales. Secret agents of every country hunted for the hidden armaments of their enemies, yelled about them in the newspapers, and immediately there'd be that warning burst of Barnhouse static, followed by... Radio-controlled fleet blown up on secret maneuver! The professor was out to make peace or bust, and nothing like him ever was. Look, Major Cuthrell, I told the FBI and the Army everything I know weeks ago. I've answered questions till I'm blue in the face. I didn't come here to ask questions, Clinton. I came to ask for your help. My help? That's right. To find Barnhouse. What if I don't want to? If you're his friend, I think you'd better. Why pick on me? You've got the FBI, the police, and Army intelligence. Why can't you find him yourself? We're trying. But you know the man well. You could spot him where we wouldn't. And you're the only one who can. Maybe. But why should I? Wherever he is, I think he's doing fine. He's making war impossible, and I like it. So do I. Yes? He's putting you out of a job. That's all right with me. I'll retire to a truck farm with pleasure. Well, then? Look, Clinton, we aren't the only ones in this race. Every country in the world has its best agents out hunting for Barnhouse. Nobody can beat that kind of a manhunt. He seems to be doing all right so far. Sure, but how long do you think he can keep it up? A week? A month? Sooner or later, he'll be spotted. And if the wrong people find him, Clinton, we're done for. You know what kind of weapon this is. Whoever controls the Barnhouse effect can control the world. Well, all right. Suppose they do find him. He'd never give the secret away. Never give it away? Are you out of your mind? You think these fellows are playing for marbles? Well, no. But Read I... the papers, Clinton. Don't you know what's going on in the rest of the world? Well, yes. They'll but... get the secret out of Barnhouse, all right. And what happens to him in the process won't be very pretty. Well, he... he must realize that then. He'll... he'll never let himself be taken alive. He may not have the choice. And if he doesn't... God help us all. All right. All right, I'm in. Good. Now, do you know anything that you haven't told us? Anything that might give us a lead? Only this. It was addressed to me. I found it here on his desk the morning after he escaped. You mean he came back here? Yes. I guess he needed to pick up some personal effects. Anyway, the files were open, and he left this note on the scrap of paper. Anything to do with the Barnhouse effect? Read it yourself. It's Greek to me. Just these few lines scrawled on a piece of paper, and the last one breaks off right in the middle of the sentence. Hmm. This stuff doesn't make any sense at all. You know, from the looks of this, I'm beginning to wonder if the professor isn't going off his rocker. I thought of that, too. All the more reason why we've got to get to him quick. He may be helpless, and the whole world's on his track. Come on, Clinton. We haven't much time. You say you do recognize this photograph, Mrs. Reardon? I tell you, it looks like Mr. Balfour's. He had the second floor front room for quite a while, but he left, oh, I should say, about a week ago. Say, is he wanted for something? Yes, if he's the man I think he is. Well, now, I'd say you're looking for the wrong fella. That Mr. Balfour, he couldn't be a criminal. Why, he wouldn't even harm a fly. He spent all his time in his womb, just thinking. Oh, brother, it's hot. What a way to spend an August afternoon, huh, Major? Give my eye teeth to be at Jones Beach. So would I, Corporal. We've got work to do here. Look, sir, we've been cruising around these radio detection cars for a week. Not a sign of Barnhouse static. The professor must have run out of things to work on. Well, we'll give him a little more time. Switch to shortwave. See if there's anything special coming through. Yes. Try the nine meter bay. Radio Mirage. Uh, let's hear that. Our American enemies who have hidden behind the unjust and diabolical persecution by Professor Arthur Barnhouse uh -oh. will tyrannize us no more. I wonder if the professor's on Today, our glorious leader takes up his residence in a shelter, shielded with lead against all dynamo-psychic threats. Hmm. With his 
protection designed by our brilliant scientists to be absolutely impregnable against the burn house effect, you will once again lead us on the path of our glorious death. Quick, triangulate it and get me a fix. I've got it. Let me check this chart. Quick, man. 3.9, 1.7. Oh, my aching back. What is it? We haven't got a prayer of finding a major. He'd have to be picked out of two million people. Where is Bonhoeffer? Right where I was wishing I was. Right smack in the middle of Jones Beach. <laughs> We're full. No more rooms tonight. We don't want a room. Do you recognize this picture? Who wants to know? Uncle wants to know. Oh. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me see it. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks a lot like room 417. About five feet eight, thin, sandy hair, yeah. glasses, little scar right across the bridge of his nose. Yeah, that's 417, all right. You mean he's here now? No, not anymore. He checked out two days ago. But he couldn't have gone far. What makes you say that? Oh, he looked sick as a dog. <laughs> couldn't hardly carry his own bag out. Uh-oh. Like I said to the other fellas, I said he looked like he was on his way to the morgue. What other fellas? <laughs> oh, the, the ones this morning. You're the second pair that's been asking for him. <laughs> Ward 15. This way, gentlemen. You're sure he's here, nurse? Oh, yes. Thank heaven we're in time. Well, I wasn't on duty when he came in, but one of the other girls told me he'd collapsed in the street. The ambulance brought him in. Poor guy. He must have really had it rough. Oh, uh, here you are. Bed number 78. This is your man. Wait a minute. This isn't Barnhouse. But oh, I was perfectly sure. Oh, wait, let me check his chart. Dismissed 8 p.m. Only an hour ago. Oh, dear, now I remember. Remember what? If he was sick, why did you let him go? Well, two of his friends came and took him away. They didn't want him in the charity ward. They said they'd make sure that he was taken care of. Every time I walk into this study, I... Keep hoping somehow I'll wake up out of a bad dream and find the professor just sitting here. Major, is there anything we haven't covered? Nothing. The police, the FBI, the air patrols, the docks, the railroad stations, everything. Not even a flea could get through this dragnet. I hope. Then I guess we sit. We sit. Maybe something will come in. Do you have to roll those dice? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I... I wasn't thinking. An hour. That's what's driving me crazy. One hour sooner and he'd have been in our hands, not theirs. I know. Well, maybe he's still all right. How can he be all right? He's in the hands of a foreign power. We don't know that for sure. The professor was a likable little duck guy. He couldn't have lasted this long if he hadn't found some friends. Maybe they came and took him away. Well, I... Grab that. Hello? Yes? Clinton, is that you? Professor Barnhouse. Clinton, they've got me. Who's got you? Where are you, Professor? I don't know. They said something about taking me to an airport. An airport? Which one? Listen, Clinton, I've got to tell you. The inkwell. What are you talking about? Remember the inkwell? <coughs> Professor. <coughs> Professor Barnhouse. Operator. Operator. Your call, please. Operator, that call just came in here. Can you trace it? I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid it's too late. Your party has been disconnected. Where are we headed? He didn't say which airport, just a hunch. The commercial airfields are all covered. But there's a little private field out here, I remember. Hasn't been used in years. Better be the one. They didn't have too much of a start on us. Maybe we'll make it in time. Step on it, Corporal. Wide open, Major. How, how'd he sound? Did he say who had him? No, all he got out was the airport and something about an Major, airport. Mr. Clinton, there's a tail light up ahead. Must be another car going like the devil. You're right, I see it. They're turning into the airfield. Come on, faster. Hold everything. Look up ahead. They're switching the floodlights on at the field. There's the plane down at the other end, all warmed up and ready to go. We'll never make it on the road. Hang on, I'm going through the fence. Right. Oh. 
Keller. What's the matter? Get going. Sorry, sir. Must have cracked the axle. They're taking off. Get out the submachine gun. You can't. Barnhouse is in that plane. You'll kill him. We've got to take that chance. That plane's headed straight for us. Hit the dirt. Get that gun working, Corporal. Aim for the propeller. Couldn't get him, Major. Well, there goes the old ball game. I'll get through to air patrol, sir. Maybe they can intercept the plane. Oh, not a chance. By the time the fighters got off the ground, the plane would be out of range. No, we've lost, Barnhouse. Nothing can save us now. Hey, what? What hit me? Clinton, now, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the plane gone. I know. Barnhouse blew it right out of the sky. He wouldn't let himself be taken alive. Boy, he really did it the hard way. Poor guy. He shouldn't have had to be a hero. All he ever wanted was peace. Peace? What's that? Now the arms race will start all over again. And with Barnhouse gone, what's left to stop it? So they brought me back here to the professor's old study to dictate this report. I'm sitting here at his desk, and it's just the way he left. Papers all over, even his old pair of dice. Arthur Barnhouse is dead. That's going to be good news for some people when they find out. The saber rattlers of the world will be busy as of tomorrow morning, getting ready to whoop up another war. But I'm afraid they're in for a little surprise. 3 a.m. now. And before morning comes, I intend to vanish, disappear completely. That's the last that anybody will ever see or hear of me directly. That's why I want to tell you now. I've been looking at the new inkwell here on the desk. The professor's last words were something about an inkwell. And in it, I found a little scrap of paper, just a few words, but they complete the note I showed the major. The note that didn't make any sense. The whole thing makes sense now. Professor Barnhouse may be dead. But you haven't heard the last of the Barnhouse effect. Not yet. I've been experimenting while I've been talking to you. And now the time has come for me to say goodbye. You see, I've just rolled my 50th consecutive seven. You have just heard Report on the Barnhouse Effect by Kurt Vonnegut, Jr. An adventure in time, space, and the unknown. Dimension X. 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 Next week, the strange story of the interspace rocket Star Cloud, which vanished mysteriously behind the great galactic barrier in the year 1986. What happened to it and to its crew? We'll tell you next week. Tonight's story, Report on the Barnhouse Effect, was adapted for radio by Clarice A. Ross. Featured in the cast were Bill Quinn as Clinton, Ed Jerome as Professor Barnhouse, and Carl Weber as Major Cuthrow. Your host was Norman Rose. Music, Albert Berman. Engineer, Bill Chambers. Dimension X is produced by Van Woodward and directed by Edward King. Tomorrow, hear Sam Spade. Now, it's Truth or Consequences on NBC. NBC.